Hi, welcome to News Click. I'm Geeta Hariharan. I have two writers with me from Egypt, uh, Radwa Ashur, who's a novelist, a short story writer, a professor, uh, and an essayist, and Edaf Suef, who's again a novelist and uh, a short story writer as well, and also an astute political commentator. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be here. I thought uh, I'd get to the point directly. We're all writers who um, hope to engage in some way or the other with um, political issues. But of course, we do it through novels and short stories and sometimes poetry, uh, but also through essays, which are a little more direct, but still there is the literary form. So I thought we would begin by talking about the various ways in which we do a political take through our writing. Um, uh, perhaps one easy way is to talk about bearing witness. Um, I know, for example, you went to the West Bank in 2000 to do some reportage, and perhaps we could start from there. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this business of hoping to engage with politics, I, mean, I think it would be, one would hope not to <laughs> have to engage with politics and have the freedom to write about whatever whatever one wanted. Um, yeah, in 1999, my uh, novel, The Map of Love, was uh, published and it was shortlisted for The Booker, which meant that I had a sort of relatively high profile. And so The Guardian asked me if I would go to Palestine and um, write about the second intifada, which had just, which had just broken out. And I did that in November 2000, and it was um, a turning point for me because even though I had, um, you know, always, of course, been aware of the Palestinian mm -hmm. issue, and uh, as a child of Egypt of the 60s, I had a commitment to it, but um, but actually visiting Palestine and seeing the reality on the ground, both in terms of seeing. Uh, what it meant to live under military occupation, and in seeing the um, the grace with which the Palestinians contrived to conduct their daily lives under very difficult circumstances were eye-openers for me. And um, I was there for a week. I went back to London and wrote a very long piece, and that really was, was the beginning of writing directly uh, political journalism or political cultural journalism. It also is the case that I haven't published a book of fiction since then. So I'm not quite sure how good or bad this is. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Radba, you, um, I know, feel very strongly about the writer being um, uh, someone who's firmly located in a historical context, so yeah. actually uh, looking at um, history of the well, the distant past as well as you know recent uh, historical events as something that might give us insights into what is happening now. Um, perhaps you'd like to yes, talk but about I, that. Yes, I don't think <clears throat> I don't think writers choose what to write about. Mm -hmm. I mean, you live certain conditions and. You feel you want to 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 respond to to recreate your experience to to bear witness to what you've seen, etc., etc. And so it's not that you choose a political topic and then you start writing about it. Uh, it's, I think it's it's more complex than that. And um, had we been uh, from, let's say, North Europe, uh, with less pressures, maybe we would have been different writers. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd have been mm -hmm. uh, North European yes. uh, uh, writers. But being Arab, being Egyptians, uh, being uh, a part of that third world with all its problems, um, <clears throat> makes us write the way we do. Um, but of course, writing is not simply um, a content, it is not simply a topic you address or an issue you address. It's more than that. You, uh, you wrestle with the language, you battle with the language, you um, uh, maybe the, the better the writer, uh, the more he feels that he has to. It's crazy, I know, but 
he or she feels that um, she has to uh, to change the language, to to uh, to innovate it, to to leave an imprint of a sort, and it's this um, <clears throat> very special relationship with the language, uh, with the tradition, with the, the the literature of other countries and the other languages mm -hmm. is all part of uh, what is at stake. So, uh, on the one hand, you want to to recreate your your own experience of time and place, and on the other, mm -hmm. you uh, uh, you hope uh, to. Uh, what about the breaking down of stereotypes? Because you've said very eloquently that along with the bombs, um, you get all the lies as well. Yes. So this sort of you know uh, reducing of this rich, wide Arab world into a few um, stereotypes. So uh, is that something you're conscious of in your writing that you have to um, break down these stereotypes? Uh, it's it's something which is always in my mind. Uh, because that's what we face all the time. You, you only have to listen to the radio, or look at a newspaper or magazine, or to uh, a uh, an American or a TV uh, or a European uh, TV channel, and you see all kinds of stereotypes, uh, and you know that this is not you, that this is not the people you know. Uh, but but that's uh, a very long story because. It has always been there. I mean, uh, colonized have always been stereotyped, and the attempt at liberation, the battle for liberation, uh, partly is a battle over the nature of the image. You start yes. saying, "This is not me. Mm. I am," and then hence comes the mm -hmm. writing. Hence, your own expression of yourself. Uh, you you express not only your individual self, because. The mere fact that you write, um, you use the language, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the experience turns into a collective experience because nobody, uh, however eloquent, has a language of his or her own. Yes. It's, it's, it's common. Yes. It's collective. And the fact that you have Arabic um, as, a, as, as a common uh, bond uh, yes. across uh, a wider uh, region yeah. is also mm -hmm. a 